Hello and welcome to the Counterattack playthrough series. We're playing Barbarossa Kiev to Rostov, 1941. The scenario is Battle on the Sea of Azov. It is October 1st. Uh, that would be turn four of the scenario. There, so we're um, just past the halfway point. Um, we'll go ahead and do the uh, strategic segment, starting with the weather determination phase, which is fixed at dry. You can see auto dry here. Then uh, supply determination phase. Let's go check it out. Uh, as before, if these guys are all in supply, they can trace back to their respective supply sources. Um, all these guys, these Germans here and Romanians, are within seven hexes of a road, and the road is within 21 hexes of that supply source over there, so we're good. Um, all these guys appear to be within seven hexes of a road. I'm looking at the axis forces right now. The farthest out is this guy, um, so let's see. So um, he can go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So everyone's in supply there. All these guys are in supply based on um, those roads that go up to that supply source way at the top there. Soviets, we've established already uh, in prior turns that everyone is in supply. So uh, that was easy. Then the replacements phase, well, we're skipping that in this uh, scenario. Let's go see uh, with reinforcements and withdrawals. Looks like there's a Soviet Yak-1. Um, going to put that in the flown box. Or, excuse me, the ready box. Um, and then looks like a couple of, uh, let's see, a BDR, Border Guards, I guess is what that would be. It's an NKVD, so that's good for defense, or depending on how you look at it, I guess. And a uh, Cavalry. They're going to go in on the east edge of the map per the uh, reinforcement schedule, which is written there. And uh, we'll go ahead and throw them right here. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and do the air readiness phase, starting with the axis. So here we go. Um, we will we'll we'll go top to bottom. That's easier. So there's all their flown or uh, ready units. So let's do their flown units. Um, we'll start with the Ju87 in the top. It's a four, um, so they go to the ready box. Uh, then the HE111, two goes to the ready box. The second HE111, it's a nine. Um, nine, rem eight, or eight plus remains here. And then the Ju88. Also a nine, so it remains here. Then we go to the damage box. Got the one Ju88 that's damaged. Got a ten, uh, remains here. And then destroyed units can't be rebuilt in this scenario. Up here, the Soviet flown box. We'll go ahead and start with the uh, SB. Ten, it's going to stay here. The PE2. Six. We're good. Moves forward to the ready box. IL2. Five goes to the ready box. And then there's no damaged, and there's a few destroyed that are going to remain destroyed. Axis air interdiction phase. The Axis have two bombers, a fighter and a dummy air unit. Uh, I think they're going to fly a bomber in to interdict this headquarters here. And uh, they will escort it with either a fighter or a dummy unit. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, there's another head Soviet headquarters up here somewhere. Let's see. Uh, I think it's here. Yep. So we'll go ahead and bring in a couple other units. One's probably maybe a bomber. Hard to who knows. Okay. Um, but I should have processed this one first down here. So let's pretend I didn't do that. Okay. So the Soviets get to decide. Um, they have one fighter. Um, are they going to intercept? Um, I think they are concerned about this area, so they will intercept. Okay, let's process this. The Axis declare the HE-111 is the mission aircraft, of course. Uh, let's see if the Soviets are able to intercept. We're going to roll on the air initiative table. Rolled a 1. Uh, one on air initiative is Axis has initiative. Axis local tactical advantage. As a reminder, that means if the uh, German 
or I guess it would be the Yak. If the Yak is able to abort or destroy the German fighter in the first round of air combat, it can then um, go for the HE-111. Sorry, I should say, if the Yak had tactical advantage, if, the, if it was Soviet tactical advantage, but it's Axis tactical advantage, which doesn't matter because there's only one Soviet. Sorry for making that confusing. So uh, we'll go ahead and do the uh, air combat between the fighters. So the German um, air combat rating is four. The Yak is uh, three, so that's pretty good. So four minus three is a, I guess it's, I, I'm flipping that around. Three, mi uh, yeah, four minus three is a plus one. So uh, that's good on the air combat table. Rolling, rolled a 10. On the plus one, uh, there's no modifiers here, so that is a miss. So the Yak, oh, they have, Yak has a chance to actually um, take out a German fighter. So Yak is three minus four, so that's a minus one. They're worse off here. They rolled a five. Five on the minus one is A aborted. So they aborted the BF-109, so it goes to the flown box. So the Yak was able to force the escort off of the AG-111. The escort did its job, it absorbed the yak's um, time, or attention, and uh, since the yak did not have local te tactical advantage, it just goes back to the phone box. And now the bomber can pursue its mission, though uh, it is undergoing AA fire from the headquarters. Go ahead and roll for that. Got a seven. Um, and then, let's see, Soviets are firing. I'm just looking at the... Uh, modifiers plus one for a firing headquarters. So uh, let's say I rolled a seven, so that goes to an eight. Eight is aborted. So it's tough to get in there. Okay. So there's that one. Let's go resolve this one next. I should have done those one by one. So um, what do we have here? Got a dummy area unit, so no one's no one cares. So that goes to the ready box. So this JU. 87, um, it's going to undergo anti-aircraft fire from the headquarters, plus one to the die roll, got a nine, that's a ten, damaged, let's see, also it's a JU-87, uh, minus one, so it's actually nine goes down to uh, the headquarters and the JU-87 bonus, cancel each other out, so the nine is at face value, that's aborted, instead of damaged, so it goes back to the phone box. And that was the Axis uh, Air Interdiction Phase, and we end the strategic segment. So now we start the Axis Player Segment with the Axis Movement Phase. We need to remedy the situation down here. The Axis tried to take out the stack. It's kind of stupid on my part, but uh, they had to retreat, so they, they need to get back up in these hexes just to pin those guys in. Um, so is there a way I can do that and just like leave them there? I just foregone conclusion that all these guys are going to be stuck down here. So um, let's have this guy go um, half. And then um, I believe this village or town here doesn't count as terrain. So that'd be half plus a half is one and then plus one for the zone of control. And just to confirm, a town counts as when you're checking the terrain, it is other terrain on the chart, so and the other terrain is clear, so yeah. Okay, and then we have uh, this guy over here, so he's gonna do something similar. We'll just waste some movement points, go one, two, three. Okay, so we have some good defense there. What else do I wanna do here? I mean, I might as well just seal the deal here. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I think this guy, We'll go um, one, two. Oh, he can't even fit in because of this six, six here. So you know what? Since he can't fit in here, he's going to bail out. I'm talking about uh, the stacking value of six and the max stacking value is 10. And so this guy would exceed it. So you know what? Well, that guy will go off and fight somewhere else. So uh, this guy can fit in one of them. So he'll go half, one, two for zone of control. And this guy will just do a minimum move here. So, um, Let's see, what's this guy gonna do? I think he's gonna do uh, some a strategic move. Um, yeah, and uh, so as a reminder, he just can't come near the enemy when he does that. Oh, you know what? He's already too close to the enemy to do a strategic move, so he's just gonna do a normal move. 
Um, I think I'm going to um, maybe move them on the primary road. Is that silly? Hmm. You know, we'll move them this direction since you can move it. There goes my rule book. Um, I think we'll go uh, one, two, three, four, five. So that wasn't very much. Okay, then uh, what do we got down here? We got this artillery here. You know, I think we're just going to keep all this artillery down here to help if the Soviets get frisky down there. Okay, well that's the southern front. Now the Melitopol area. Let me make sure I've been calling that place correct. Correctly, Melitopol. Because I think that, I think this place has been in the news lately and I think they call it Mariupol or something like that now. So um, maybe one's Russian and one's Ukrainian. So uh, Melitopol front, I forgot in the supply phase, this guy is back into uh, regular supply. So um, what do we want to do here? You know, do the Germans want to keep pressing the attack? They've taken six step losses. If they take 12, they lose. Maybe, you know, it's tough. Do they want to, should they keep pressuring? I think they're good for one more attack here. What do we got in here? So I might want to bring, these guys count as five. What do we have down here? Five, okay. So, and then what do we have in here? I'm looking at stacking. So this is uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so um, I think we're gonna uh, set this guy up to the side. We'll pull him out. It's one, pull him out. We are left with six, oop, seven, eight, nine. And then I'll put the, uh, I will cancel my pull out of this guy. So we have 10 there. And then here, let's, let's pull these little guys out. Um, put one here. Maybe I'll have this guy back off to around here. And then the uh, SS LAH. I think that's Liebstandart Adolf Hitler moving in here. You know, maybe, yeah, he's good there. Okay, so we've got 10 stacking points ready to attack that location again. This guy here. Um, what's our situation up here? Poor stacking. I think he's going to go one, two, three, four. Just get a little more defense up there. Okay. So we're going to go to our central front. Do we want to get into attack position? I don't think so. So this guy's here. We have some backup over here. Um, got this good size um, stack here. Now, if, just as a reminder, this section this is a like supply dead zone for me until this bridge gets rebuilt. Maybe it'll never get rebuilt. I'm a little worried about the Soviets like massing forces and then rushing over here, but it's probably unlikely given the situation at the moment. Um, so I want these guys in position to be able to, you know, come to the rescue up here, at least put some pain on the Soviets. So I think we'll leave all that stuff uh, alone. And then um, in this area, we'll leave those guys alone and the, what was this, um, Zaporozhye, um, sorry if you speak Russian and I'm destroying your language, um, those guys will stay there as well. So, uh, that ends the Axis movement phase. Okay, now for the, uh, Axis attack declaration phase. There's only going to be one attack right here. Uh, then the Soviet reaction phase. So the Soviets um, can react if there's a headquarters within range. There is. It's got two points available. Um, so first, um, they can react their armor in. Uh, let me see what the movement rate is for Soviet armor reacting. Well, it's at half movement rate. Um, so I think I screwed that up again. So if this guy wanted to react, he's got two movement points. Go one, two. No, I'm good, I'm good. Um, because when you react into a battle, you uh, ignore zone of control. So let's see, can he fit in there? He can, so he's gonna react down to here. 
Okay, and then um, this headquarters has one more point. It's going to issue a um, an order, I should say. Let's see if I'm looking for the right one. So it's going to issue an order, and then they're going to designate artillery for the attack, for the defense, I should say. Um, I guess they could have ordered this guy in too, but uh, one, two, nope, couldn't have made it. Uh, but there were only th two points available. Okay, so that is the Soviet reaction. Now for Axis combat. Do the Axis, the Axis do not have any uh, aircraft to support, but the Soviets do. Question is, do they want to use both of their bombers for this? Um, I think they do. So they're going to supply these bombers in. And the bombers are going to go un uh, undergo anti-aircraft fire. So we'll go with the uh, PE-2 first. Oops, sorry. Uh, PE-2, no effect. Uh, that was a 2. IL-2, roll to 5. Um, that looks like no effect as well. So they've made it in. Uh, this is pretty good... Uh, combat air support or uh, you know ground support strength um, three so that'll be um, plus three to the die roll okay so um, let's figure this out here um, we'll go ahead and reveal the order uh, I assume that's not a surprise that's a um, no retreat order um, one thing, uh, when I'm declaring attacks and stuff, you know, I'm supposed to make sure I have a certain odds ratio, so I'm just kind of glossing over that. I can just see it at a glance. So here we are. We got the defenders, two, six, seven, eight. So eight defense. The attack coming in with seven and six is 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, and then uh, this guy's reduced. Um, so that's 6, that's 23, uh, 24, 25 for the artillery, and this is 8, 9, 10, 11 for the artillery, so 23 to 11, that is 2 to 1. And um, the diral modifiers are going to be well, it would be plus four, but the Mac for the Soviets plus four um, because of the two bombers plus the no retreat order. Uh, but the max shift you can have is three. And the attackers don't have any um, modifiers. Uh, there's no armor bonus because this armor here cancels it out. There's no um, combined arms, because this is not an armored division. Um, or a panzer division, I should say. Um, and a n division to get combined arms must also, besides have its units together, be attacking with a panzer division. So uh, this isn't going to look very good. So we're rolling on the 2 to 1 plus 3 die roll. <laughs> Roll to 10. Uh, this is going to be awful. Uh, it's possible that will end the game. Uh, no, it can't. it's not going to be too bad. Uh, 2 to 1. Um, die roll to 10 plus 3. Um, the max you can go is 11. So um, it's 1R. Could have been much worse. 1R for the attacker. So 1 step loss. So I'm incrementing the axis step losses from 6 to 7. One step loss and um, a retreat. Well, that's bad. Retreat's bad. So I think we're going to um, kill the weak remaining cavalry here. Oops. OK, 
Okay, they go to the eliminated units box. Let me tidy up the Soviet defense. There is no retreat result for the Soviets, so that doesn't really matter there. These bombers fly back to the flown box. Um, just tidying up here, and then we will process our retreat. So they have to go two hexes, so I might as well go... Um, I want to keep them on the side of the river if I can, so that was one. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll go two. And then... Let's show what we got there. And then these guys can go one. That was a stack at ten, I think. Yep. Um, I guess one, two. It's not going to be too bad because we're going to have motorized movement in a minute. Uh, but a little exposed here. Um, that's. I guess that's the last attack I'm going to do as the axis. Um, and maybe they just need to, you know, hunker down and not let any of these victory locations fall. Okay, so that was the Axis combat phase. Next comes the Axis motorized movement phase. Uh, motorized and cavalry units move half. So we can try to remedy the situation where this battle just happened. Um, what do we have in here? So that's a infantry. So we have this cavalry that can move. Um, this motorized division. Hmm. I'm a little nervous about this artillery. You know, the Soviets can just come down here and pounce on these guys. So I think this cavalry is going to go up to here, bolster that location. And I think the uh, SS division will cruise over here. Um, and maybe this motorized motorcycle will come in here. Let me just make sure I got enough space. Five, six, seven. Okay. Um, let's see what else we have around here. Don't think I want to do any other motorized moves. I think we're good. Okay, now we're going to uh, do the axis engineering phase, and the only thing to really do here is uh, attempt to repair a bridge. You know that uh, engineer that was way down by the crime area, I should have put, brought him up here. I mean, he couldn't have gotten here in this turn, but oh well. Um, okay, so roll the die, roll a one, uh, not repaired. Okay, uh, that's the end of the Axis player segment. Okay, for first thing in the Soviet player segment is the Soviet motorized movement phase. Cavalry or half movement, uh, motorized full. So, this is just tough. I feel like no one can really make any headway anymore. Um, but the Soviets have two more mandated attacks they have to make if they want to win without taking out 12 ste axis steps. Um, so I suppose they might as well try to take out axis steps and do those mandated attacks. Problem is, because of the sequence of play, their infantry can't attack unless it's adjacent to the Germans, so we're going to have to move infantry up. But uh, right now we're doing armor and cavalry, so I think we're going to... Well, let's see, what, what plan are we going to do here? There's a bunch of like weak Germans here. There's also this guy here on a victory location, and then we have this down here. Decent number, good forces here though. So I want to move a bunch of infantry to a spot where they can inflict harm. Um, and then have, ar sorry, the reason I'm talking about this, because you can't move infantry right now, is that I want the armor available. So this is going to all happen next turn. Um, so I think we're going to, it's going to be probably this guy and if the axis back this up, maybe attack this stack, which um, contains a bunch of little 
wimpy guys. Um, so let's see this armor here. It's gonna go one, two, three. So it's in range um, to help this strong point, but better, more importantly, it's near this guy. Now this armor that reacted in there, he'll go ahead and move up with him. Okay, and then um, there's another armor in here. I think we'll just get these guys stacked up over here. Of course, the German player, if it was a, if there was another German player, would be wondering, okay, what are these guys doing here? Um, there's some cavalry that's coming in as a reinforcement. So uh, we'll move that, it's at half. We'll go ahead and do, um, could have, I was thinking I can have them do strategic movement, but um, I think I can only do that in the normal movement phase. Um, so we'll go ahead and go one, two, uh, oops, one, two, three. So I'm looking for more opportunities to, uh, get units down there for the battle. Uh, let's see, yeah, there's some armor there. Now it is being positioned here so it can react into over here, but that's okay. We'll keep it in range. Um, just slide it down a little. This cavalry, it'll stay there. It can, let's see, next turn it would have three movement points. So it can get to this guy for sure, but could it go one, two? Hmm. Maybe, maybe it'll back off a little down to here. Okay, I think that's it for the Soviet motorized movement phase. Next, we will do, uh, well, the, the, the attack declaration phase. Well, they're not going to declare any attacks. So that's that, and so there's no axis reaction. And then we move into the Soviet movement phase. So I'm basically spending the entire Soviet turn getting ready for a big attack. Um, and there's only two turns after this left. That's going to be very difficult. So I think we're going to see which of these guys do I want to try to get. Well, might as well go for the victory location. So move this powerful infantry down. Um, move this guy into it. Um, let's see, motorized, now move at half. Um, so it's two and a half, so you go one, two, doesn't quite have enough to get in, but he's size one, so I'm going to put him just like right next to him so we can hop in later. Um, what else do we have? So I don't have a whole lot here. I'm inclined to denude this a little bit and go, well, Let's see, I could abandon this strong point here. Move these guys up. They're gonna move up like this. So the Germans see this coming now, so that's eight. And then I'll move this guy up. Um, one, two, three, four. Okay. It's highly mobile. Or both of these guys are more mobile than this guy, so maybe he'll come over here too. So that'll be half, one, one and a half, two and a half. Um, what else? What else? So yeah, we have a swimpy guy here. He'll come out over here. So really denuding the defenses of Melitopol in order to Hopefully next turn, hammer on this guy. And I think these armor will cruise in here next turn, but uh, they're going to hang out here for the moment. This artillery, range two. Well, I'm really going to show what's going on here, so it's going to move up into this strong point. So 
all the Germans have to do is just rush a bunch of guys into there and foil this, but um, able to slide this artillery down a little, um, down to here. Sorry, came from right there. Okay, we have some reinforcements coming in from this from last turn. One, two, three, four. Um, this cav here. One, two, three, four, five, six. In KVD, I want to get that into Melitopol. One, two, three. Four, five. Okay, still have some guys that have not been released from reserve. Um, I feel like I'm like wasting a bunch of guys, Soviets along the riverbank up here, but I feel if they left when the German Panzers come, I'm gonna wish that I had kept them there. Maybe. Okay, what else we got? I think we're good down here, Soviets are just hanging. So that's the um, end of the Soviet movement phase. Next is the Soviet engineering phase. Um, they're not going to engineer anything. Then the Soviet surrender phase, that is skipped in this scenario. So then we go to the game turn interface and we're gonna see some hurt next turn as the Mass German reinforcements come on the board. Catch you later.